40 years, people have been unearthing our heritage using metal detectors. After some initial mistrust between detectorists and archaeologists, this relationship in England and Wales has matured into one of mutual respect and a closely forged partnership aimed at learning more about the history of the country and its people through the ages. The impact from metal detectorists' finds on the museum displays has been absolutely incredible. But the close partnership between detectorists and archaeologists enjoyed in England and Wales does not extend to the Republic of Ireland, where draconian laws have made detecting for antiquities illegal. Well, here we are on an absolutely gorgeous day. Uh, I'm in Norfolk. I'm standing on a field that we think has a lot of Roman history. And with my detecting buddies, for the next um, two hours or so, we're going to be metal detecting these, these fields. Uh, we hope to find some evidence of habitation over the past 10,000 years because people have walked these fields and the surroundings for all that time and many of them have dropped items in the ground that are made of metal. And using our metal detectors, of course, we aim to detect those finds and uh, responsibly extract them from the ground. Any finds that we uncover today, uh, over 300 years old, will be handed over to the archaeologists who will record those items and uh, identify them. And then we can add a little bit more to the historical jigsaw. I was born in Dublin in the Republic of Ireland. Today I'm in Norfolk in England, metal detecting. And everything's legal. However, if I was to be metal detecting like this, Back in Ireland, it'll be a totally different story. Norfolk is the county in England where the government-funded scheme that records fines by metal detectorists was really born. It still has the largest number of reported antiquities in the country, and the best and most important of these finds are on display in Norfolk's prestigious Castle Museum, housed in a splendid 11th century castle that dominates the centre of Norwich. Well. Here we are in Norwich Castle Museum and I'm, I'm surrounded by um, a huge collection of absolutely stunning finds from the Anglo-Saxon period. The metal detecting community work closely with the archaeologists and the portable antiquity scheme. And um, it's absolutely brilliant and very heartening uh, to realise that they're on display here. Uh, as a result of the metal detectors mostly waiving their right to the financial reward for finding the items out in the fields. And, uh, and for me and many, many others, that is the real reward, to get the items uh, of beauty and historical importance on display for the public, for all the kids and everybody else to see and learn from them and relive what happened in the past. In Norfolk, the close working partnership between the detectorists and the archaeologists is freely acknowledged and even highlighted in the Castle Museum. Archaeologists from the county's highly respected museum service are regular attenders at meetings of metal detecting clubs, giving advice and sharing their knowledge with detectorists. It's estimated that perhaps a third of the finds on display in the museum's Anglo-Saxon section have been unearthed by detectorists. Finds reported to the museum service by detectorists are recorded under the Portable Antiquities Scheme. In Norfolk alone, that amounts to more than 10,000 fines a year. Portable Antiquities Scheme works in England and Wales by having a network of fines liaison officers who are based in every county of, of the country. And they act as the sort of central point where metal detectorists can bring their objects. And when a metal detectorist brings their objects in, the finds liaison officer will record them by writing a description of the item, photographing it, and in some cases, an archaeological drawing, technical drawing, will be prepared with it. And that information is then placed on the Portal Antiquity Scheme database. And this is a publicly accessible database, which means that researchers, uh, all members of the public, can look and see what's been found in their locality. The monthly meeting of Norwich Detectors Club, founded nearly 40 years ago and committed to responsible detecting. It has a close working relationship with the county's museum service. 
Many detectorists in England and Wales belong to clubs like this one, who are mostly gathered under the overall umbrella of the National Council for Metal Detecting. At Norwich Detectors Meeting, archaeologists examine the finds on display from members and generously share their knowledge and expertise. First one here is a normal, normal Daenerys here. Um, Trajan 98 to 117, Silver Daenerys Mint of Rome. Um, the reverse, you have a figure of victory inscribing a shield set on a, a little pillar. Um, this is celebrating his um, Dacian victories. He conquers Dacia um, in, in the sort of um, 100s up to about 113 when it's all done with. Um, so that's the sort of victory issue of celebrating that. In Norfolk, metal detecting has revolutionised our view of archaeology and it was because the potential for understanding the past in a different way was appreciated in the 1970s when metal detecting first became a popular hobby that the system evolved for recording finds made by metal detectorists and that was undertaken in Norfolk by people like Tony Gregory who's now sadly dead but also people like Andrew Rogerson who still works in the county and it was on this voluntary basis of you give us the information about the find spots we'll give you the information about what you found that the system developed and that's why the Border Antiquity Scheme came to develop and in Norfolk we've seen a dramatic transformation in our knowledge about all different periods of society through metal detecting. We have a dagger handle, post-medieval in date, uh, sort of cruciformed. There would appear to be something missing off of the terminal here. As you can see, the size of it uh, is very small. It gets completely lost in my hand here. Maybe you were meant to hold it like thus. Maybe it's very feminine, or maybe it was just owned by a very small man. But it's a very, very nice find indeed. The Portable Antiquities Scheme in England and Wales has been a huge success and vastly increased the amount we know about who lived in this country before us. The PAS has recorded now over one million finds, most of which would have lain in the ground if they hadn't been unearthed by detectorists. But what about those countries such as the Republic of Ireland who do not have a similar scheme and where detecting is outlawed? Uh, other countries that don't have uh, an equivalent to the Portal Antiquity Scheme are missing an incredible variety of information most importantly but also objects that can be passed on to museums for public benefit and re-examined in the future by archaeologists. Uh, you can think of a number of countries that do and don't have active recording of finds and it's those countries particularly in places like Denmark and in Germany where we're seeing like in England a revolution in our understanding of the way that early medieval society for instance interacted with one another. We're seeing an enormous uh, number of coins for instance, we're getting new types of coins showing up. We can see from mostly metal detected Iron Age coins that there must have been something in the region of 16, 17,000 different dyes used for just Iron Age coins in East Anglia. It's completely transforming our knowledge and those countries that aren't recording metal detected finds in the way that we do are missing all of that out. Medieval buckle here, um, all there apart from uh, part of a pin and um, the uh, plate is, is decorated with um, Oh, it's all gilt, which is very pleasant, but the plate is decorated with sort of strange quatrefoil type things and it's all divided into four. Really an unusual um, decorative arrangement there and uh, rather, rather nice. That, that date would be 13th or 14th century, maybe a bit more 13th. These are, these are the finds that came up on our last visit to the field. Um, and as you can see, there's a breadth of finds here spanning quite a few eras and it's very representative of what's coming off the land and very representative of what the hobby's about isn't it? That's amazing, that's amazing because it's not so long since we started here with a very clean slate and we're looking around and trying to unravel yeah. what has this land been in use for and the evidence that, that you've uh, accumulated is absolutely uh, that's great.
I hope this film has given you some idea of the enormous benefits that responsible metal detecting can give to the whole overall historical picture. And I hope that the decision makers back in Ireland will reflect perhaps on their draconian legislation at the moment and allow more freedom to the Irish metal detecting community. Thank you.